the coronavirus, once a condition that many Americans regarded as an unfortunate occurrence in China, has turned into a pandemic like nothing anybody has seen in their lifetime. Though the resulting quarantine in America hasn't lasted particularly long, it can feel odd to remember that in our lives before it, we were debating who would win elections and become the next president of the United States. Now, schools have closed. Those fortunate enough to continue working have had to turn their homes into offices. Some businesses have put employees on furlough, and religious institutions are facing difficult decisions of whether or not to continue services. It's safe to say that this virus has greatly changed the lives of everyone. I wonder, in a world where everything has had to stop, will this be a force that lets everybody set aside long-standing ethical and political conflicts? Or will it only exacerbate it? This is Han Chao Li, an international student from China. Like many Asians in America, he's faced xenophobia, isolation, and he's witnessed many Americans treating China as an enemy in the fight against the coronavirus. This is his story. My grandparent, grandfather, he he from a very poor area. It's, you know, in China, if you're from a very poor area, it's different than American. You don't have clothes. You don't have the shoes. Sitting down with him, he told me more about his family's past of scavenging for basic necessities, even eating mud, with others close to them eating the bark of trees when there wasn't enough rice or any other food. And then I learned his main motivation for coming to America, for teaching himself English in five months, and truly following in the footsteps of his family who have persevered through so much hardship. Because my grandma, oh, she died on the ship. She... She, uh, her life is, is like um, a normal Chinese, just, just work for family and then die. Unlike his grandmother, he's gotten to travel where she never could. And yet, like her, he remains informed and optimistic as the entire world faces hardship. Often, like, you know, like American and other European countries, they have two months to prepare the to to fight with the virus, but they think it's a chance virus. I don't care about that. But if they they should they should be patient to learn to come to commute with other countries. You know, in China we have if you want to clap a hand, one hand it can't clap. It must two hands. So if you don't blame other country, no other country we are not fed back. He goes on to explain how he believes that we should learn from other countries and trust officials working in the medical field. He also expressed his beliefs that heavy reliance on media can stir controversy if we, as normal people, aren't careful about where we're getting our information. Overall, his main message is one of peace and gaining strength from one another. America is not a, uh, not a normal country. It's the, the, the leader of the whole world. If a leader always say, I want to be the first. Now it's not a country. You know, we are the world. We are small world. We are small village. We should communicate with each other. Though a simple message from one person from one area of the world, I believe it's one that needs to be heard, especially in times like these. Though we don't know how much longer we'll be in quarantine or when a cure for coronavirus will be ready, I think we all know that this is stressful for everyone. For once, normal lives of the entire population have come to a halt, bringing us together in one of the largest ways possible, and yet leaving reasons to tear us apart. This makes me think that perhaps there is a need for two vaccines, one for the literal virus killing thousands, and another to cure the polarization that has driven us apart for years. For now, all we can do is be safe and have hope.